All right, I'm going to shoot it to you straight. I think NC State is going to win the Atlantic Division. I've got three reasons why, okay? Three good reasons why NC State is going to win the Atlantic for the ACC this football season. Find out why on today's episode. Here we go. You are locked on ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to today's edition of Locked On ACC. Super excited for you to join me, Candace Cooper, your daily host of Locked On ACC. A few housekeeping notes. It is the summertime, so we are on a bit of a break. So instead of having five episodes a week, we only have three, but there are three quality ones all the same. This week, you won't see any of my other co-hosts because I'm in Hawaii enjoying my life. So I'm going to do a little profiles myself, but be rest assured that next week you'll be back in action with Kenton Gibbs. You'll have a little bit of J.J. Jackson, Jersey Drake, and A.J. Black in the building. So do not fret if you're looking to hear those guys' voices and opinions. We will definitely have them there. Now let's get right into it, shall we? As I mentioned at the top of the show, NC State, I feel like, is going to be the team to take on the Atlantic Division and come out on top. They have all the pieces to win a championship. Now, I would even argue to say they might win the whole kit and caboodle in winning the ACC championship, but let's be conservative this route. Let's just be nice, <laughs> you know, not give people too many panties in a bunch. I already know you're going to be in the YouTube comments going crazy, but either way, I appreciate the feedback. Good, bad, or in between. So all my Clemson fans, don't panic. All my Wake Forest people, just relax. Just hear me out. Boston College, FSU, all the like. Just breathe. I know Syracuse people are going to be up in arms the most, but just breathe. And let me tell you my reasons why I think NC State is going to win the Atlantic Division. All right, so number one, NC State has 17 returning starters. That's the most in the ACC. Now, in sports – on teams, any sort of program, tradition is key. Um, having availability for guys who are key returners, very key. Having consistency, having that leadership, having all of those ducks right in a row, super key. One thing we know about sports especially is that we really appreciate and love when some of our guys come in return and are prepared to do big things for us, right? And that's exactly why I think NC State is in the best position out of the entire conference. 17 returns is a lot. You have a lot of leadership under your belt. You have a lot of guys who've been there before. You also have a lot of guys who are pissed off from not having the kind of seasons that they know they can have. So I think that's one of the reasons why I think NC State is going to be clutch. Key players on defense include Peyton Wilson, who we all know at times when Notre Dame was in the conversations around ACC play or Defensive Player of the Year, all of those things, right? Peyton Wilson certainly had his number called in terms of being the top guy on defense. Battling injury, of course, he's always had kind of an up and down year, but he's back. He's ready to take it on, take on the challenge of being with the pack. You also have Drake Thomas, Isaiah Moore, who's coming off of injury. Corey Durden, who's a huge returner. Shaheen Battle, who has been great for them as a cornerback. Cyrus Fagan, who was injured last season. And then Tyler Baker Williams, who I think is one of the most underrated people part of that defense. So those are the key people that I think must you must look out for determining whether or not NC State is going to be great from a defensive standpoint. They have the right leadership in Peyton Wilson, very well-spoken, very easy to lead that defense. More importantly, you got Drake Thomas, who's also going to – I'm going to talk about his brother here in a second. I think he is just one of those guys who just wants to win, very much in love with the pack. And then Corey Durden had a hell of a season last year. Returning lets you know he still feels like he has room for improvement. So a hungrier wolf, you know, that just lets you know it's going to be a good one. So those are my key players on offense. I mean, defense, excuse me. Now, my key players on offense, we all know, we've seen Devin Leary. We've seen the Heisman campaign rolling. I would give you a bit of a caution. <laughs> See it before. Not saying my team over there in Chapel Hill, a little too Heisman talk early could lead to some shakiness. Now, do I think that Devin Leary has the same offensive line that my guy uh, Sam Howell did? No. Do I feel like he has more weapons? Sure. Do I feel like he has – is he going to have to run the ball like Sam Howell? Maybe. Only say that because that's probably one of the biggest hiccups for NC State, right? You look at their running back issues. 
more overall production on the ground is definitely needed after they only averaged an ACC low of three and a half yards per rush last fall. So Ricky is gone. Bam Knight is gone. Jordan Houston is going to have to step up in a big way on that in that backfield, right? Then you look at the O-line. You have Grant Gibson, who is a redshirt senior. He's one of the biggest personalities that you have there at NC State. Loves to pack. Back for another one. I think he's going to be great to have him lead that offensive line. Again, because you're with the loss of Icky, it's going to be essential for Jordan Houston to get the proper holes and such and then not have to lean so heavily on Devin Leary. When it comes to some offensive weapons, you got Devin Carter, who doesn't have to share the spotlight with Emeka Amezi, which I think will be good for him. Only bit of caution, I hope, in the offseason, he's learning how to catch and secure the ball. He struggles a bit sometimes with these big passes and big moments, and I think that's ultimately going to be something that you know he'll have to just get through. Now, I will say, the boy has come up clutch some key moments last season with his, you know, catches. But I think, you know, if he just feels the same sort of confidence going into this year, they'll be good to go. Another key person that I think is going to be one of the better offensive weapons is Trent Penix. I think a lot of times when you look at uh, college football, you don't necessarily lean on your tight ends. But for me, Trent Penix is probably going to be one of those silent assassins that just comes in, does his work, keeps it rolling, right? So those are my big key players for NC State. I will also say from a coaching staff, or excuse me, from a special teams standpoint, Chris Dunn, he has made significant strides, finally getting over some of those mental hurdles, right? He has, I mean, see Clemson game. Like, let's be honest. We're going back and forth, missing kicks, making kicks, you know, all those good things. Um, I think that he is going to be essential just in terms of being a veteran in the special teams locker room, or room, I should say. And just making sure that, you know, when it comes down to what should be some really good battles, you can, you know, win on a kick. You can win on a shorter, uh, short shot. All those things that are going to be essential for NC State this season. Finally, you got Thayer Thomas, who is going to be the punt returner. I think he, again, is very explosive, just like his brother. Super quick, very agile. I'm pretty sure it's the, I don't know if it's Thayer or Drake that wears the cornrows, but whatever, whatever works for them, you know, hey. If it works for you this season, I'm all about it. My final point in terms of returning is the coaching staff, right? We've seen a lot of turnover for the ACC. We've seen a lot of new coaches who have new staffs who are trying to get everyone to gel. Whether or not you have seniors or mostly freshmen, you're trying to get everyone to be best friends, which is always difficult to do, right, in a, what, seven-month, ten-month span. Trying to tell everyone to get, dial in, buy into your system. You're trying to get rid of some guys who you didn't recruit, trying to bring in some guys that you did recruit to get along with the guys that you didn't, it's a whole lot of mess. So NC State has on its side that they have the returners for the coaching staff, right? You have the same strength and conditioning programs. You have all of those good things. One of the few remaining ones intact, I will say Dave Doran, certainly for better or worse to me is the, for better or worse, he's going to be the head coach of NC State until he does not want to be. I know some of you NC State fans say, my God, can't get over that nine-game hump, right? He can't get that 10th win. But I truly believe if this turns out to be the year that everyone is predicting for NC State, I see him being here until he retires, truly. I think he is going to be the NC State coach until he doesn't want to be anymore, until he, maybe he wants to move up, go to you know a different thing. But you know he's very much loving NC State, C, Cigar, Red Solo Cup, all the like and good stuff. So those are just my two cents on the returners. So that's the major key is the returners for NC State is going to be one of the biggest reasons why they'll win the Atlantic. Now, do you want to mention that you know our friends at Built are always coming out with new amazing flavors? Well, this time, Built has truly outdone themselves with their new mud pie flavor. And for the first time ever, Built is introducing the new mud pie, fil- mud pie flavor in both mud pie bar, like a protein bar, and mud pie puff, those delicious marshmallows that we all have come to know and love well you know what a mud pie is like not sure if you're familiar a lot of people down south like cream pies all that good stuff well if you're a fan of chocolate you better sit down for this the mud pie bar is rich whipped cream and chocolate mousse smothered in 100 real chocolate and topped with cookies and cream crumble absolutely delicious but more than that it is healthy 
100% covered in real chocolate. You can definitely get the goodness in just 150 calories and 8 grams of sugar. What's great about Built Bars are the bars are made with collagen, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides a ton of health ben benefits. Go to Built.com right now, use promo code LOCK15, and you get 15% off your order. Again, using promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. All right, so we're rocking and rolling here, Locked on ACC Podcast, and I'm giving you the three keys as to why NC State is going to win the Atlantic Division more than having the key returners strength schedule. I personally feel like NC State's got all the gimmies in front of them because of how well I think all of NC State is built in terms of their returners and how the talented I think that they are. A trip to Clemson right on October 1st is likely to be the decision to some about the Atlantic Division, but I don't quite agree. I think there's other factors that play into this, right? So NC State starts the season against East Carolina. I don't think you can sleep on East Carolina, right? I think that's very much a team where you have to be sharp. ECU, for those of you who don't know East Carolina, NC State, they're about an hour 15 apart, okay? A lot of people from ECU, you know, probably could have gone to NC State, choose the, you know, one or the other. They probably get into both. And they make that decision. Some people say NC State's a little bit harder to get into the ECU. So people in the ECU tend to hold a grudge. Like they're very much adamant about their team. They love a little in-state rivalry. Like, you know, Carolina's one, but ECU, that's a whole nother beast. They very much care. There's not a lot to do out there in Greenville, North Carolina. So they're all about their pirates. One of those things we also saw last season, ECU didn't have a slump here. They were very much up for the task. And I think if you don't, if you sleep on ECU, NC State, you'll have a difficult year for yourself. So they definitely can't take the Pirates lightly. Next game NC State has is Charleston Southern. I think for one, you look at the fact that another gimme, but it's not one you can sleep on. It's another good prep game that can get yourself ready to go. The big daddy of them comes on September 17th when NC State will have to play Texas Tech. Now it's an out-of-conference game, but very much a strong opponent. It'll give you that first sense and taste of when you're trying to make that college football playoff campaign, can you sit here and say Texas Tech is one of the reasons why you guys should go ahead and usher us and put us into the college football player playoff conversation, depending on how strongly they do and perform, right? So that, to me, is the first test that they truly are going to make this their statement for being in the college football playoff conversation. Then NC State plays UConn. And again, a preparatory game, but they can't look too far ahead. I'm not really worried about UConn. It's the October 1st game, as I mentioned above, that they'll face Clemson in Death Valley. So last season, it was at NC State. It was all the emotion. Clemson, you know, was coming there with barrels and pieces of themselves. They weren't the Clemson of old. DJU wasn't performing like he should. The defense was beat up, torn and tired. Now you don't have a Brett Venables, but you do have an internal hire. You also have the idea of DJ you having a step up game, or if he's not doing well, he's going to be rotated out, right? So I think that Clemson ultimately has the opportunity to truly be great, but NC State is right there knocking on the door, has saying, I've already beat them. We already have that monkey off our back. A lot of those guys have already seen what it takes to take down Clemson. They have to be just more, they have to be just as focused, if not more, going into this season because listen, that's a Clemson team that has a chip on his shoulder. They want to bring back and be the Clemson of old. So NC State is going to have to remind folks that we're here and now and we're, like we're not going anywhere. Okay, cool, period. Then right after Clemson, whether or not you're right on, high off emotion, of you've got a Florida State team who has nothing to lose. Not saying Florida State is bad, but I'm certainly saying the Florida State has everything necessary in their power to just go ahead and trick one off, right? They're playing at home, playing on a Saturday most likely going to be at night. I think Florida State would love nothing more than to go into Carter-Finley and absolutely demolish NC State and drip, uh, what's it called? demolish the college football playoff hopes that they have. If NC State can't beat the Florida State, we can knock that CFP conversation out the window. But if they keep things rolling, especially with that high intensity and especially winning in dominating fashion, there's no reason that why we can't be high on them, right? Cool. So then you got Syracuse has the next matchup on the 15th, and I certainly think that this will be a good tune-up game. Get yourself right if you are the Wolfpack. And then you finally got um, Virginia Tech. You're playing them and playing Virginia Tech at home. Coach Pride, new coach, feeling all that goodness. I still think that it's going to be 
uh, check mark win column for NC State. And then you've got Wake Forest on 11 11 5. I think that Wake Forest is definitely going to be a team that you can't sleep on because let's be frank, Wake Forest had the, had the year last year where they won 10 games and they were just rolling until they weren't. <laughs> and you look at the game last year in Winston Salem and you look at how well NC State fought but came up short. It's just one of those things where I think that, you know, ultimately it should have gone to state, ultimately went to the Demon Deacons. And now you look at yourself like, hey, I would love to get some revenge on those guys out of Winston-Salem. So you're playing at home, you get all the advantages, maybe you get all the calls, all of those good things. Then you got NC State facing off against Boston College, which Coach Halfley, they could be feeling themselves this season. Who knows? Everything lives or dies by Phil Dracovic. Same way, a lot of things are happening, you know, because of Devin Leary, but Devin certainly has a little more help than Phil. With, if Zay Flowers goes down, they're certainly in trouble. But, you know, all in all, I'm going to give that one to NC State. NC State then faces off against Louisville in Kentucky, right? Going to be a give me for NC State, let's be honest. Like, unless I see something crazy out of Louisville this season, I'm not feeling like that's going to be a difficult one. Then you end on the traditional Thanksgiving game where all the emotions are high. CC Emeka Amezi playing, facing off against North Carolina, right? You've been beaten by 50 at times. You've won on final plays of drives. You know how it is. It doesn't matter the record. All it comes down to is pride. I would hate for the final game of NC State's season, whether or not they go to the college football playoffs, to ride on this Carolina game. That would be terrible for NC State because I think the emotions would get the best of them. Now, that's my only thing. I think the emotions would get the best of them. I think last year, because it was so close or so you know full of emotion, up and down game, that made the adrenaline run super high. But I think if you just know, if you almost want it too bad, you know that like that last bit of built bar where you drop it on the ground, you're like, damn. Like I really feel like if NC State is so close to college football playoffs that North Carolina stands in this way, I just see Mac Brown pulling out a miracle. I don't know. I'm just I'm, I don't know who my quarterback is yet, but I just see, I just see UNC pulling out a miracle. So I'm just saying that. I hope it doesn't come down to that game. I truly do. Like I don't want it for. NC State's sake, I truly hope it doesn't come down to that game. But overall, if you're looking at this list, all the games that I mentioned, the struggle games, Clemson. The struggle game, Wake Forest. The struggle game, I think, is going to be Texas Tech. Right? Those are the three that I'm like, okay, let's really see what NC State's built about. Okay? Let's see where we're at. Let's see what we're feeling in terms of the Wolfpack front. But other than that, if you get in your own – unless you get in your own way, which NC State's known to do, they should be good to go. So there, there's that. Right? But my final, so that's key number two. It's key number one, returners. Key number two, strength of schedule. All right? Key number three, what could it possibly be? I kind of mentioned it and alluded to it. So I really think that NC State, it's high time that they get a victory. I'm not even going to hold you. It's high time that good things happen for NC State. I think the paper fortunes, those who just are due for a good one, right? You didn't get the holiday ball. You've struggled against, you know, teams that you should have beat. My CC Miami, CC Wake Forest, right? Games that you want back. I think this season where you got 17 returners, you know Dave Dorn has that chip about wanting to get that 10th game. All these contract extensions about being great. Well, like all the attention is there. The Heisman campaign for Devin Leary, it's there, right? So I can't imagine you saying to yourself, yeah, NC State doesn't have a chance. How? How can you not say that? Not only do they have a chance, but to me, they're just due. I think they're due for a really good special season. I think they have all the right pieces in place to do that. Now, if they don't, the only reason why they don't is going to be because of NC State. And I think everyone has come to grips with that, right? I think NC State has definitely been a team where, you know, if any time they have hiccups, it's all like I wouldn't even give it to I wouldn't say bad revving. I wouldn't say the t- other team was just so much more dominant. I truly believe that it was NC State getting in its own way because they have the talent. You have all of it takes to be great. So I'm sitting here saying to you, just do the damn thing already, right? Get yourself in the position to be most successful. If you can do it, I truly believe that an ACC championship is in your future. Or let's even back up. I believe that winning the Atlantic Division is in your future. I believe the ACC championship is in your future. But more than that, I truly feel like you can be in the college football playoff conversation, if not the New Year's Six Bowls. 
And, you know, I think that would be a consolation, but nonetheless, at least you know the New Year's, New Year's Six and college football playoff games are going to be played. Like, I know we're living in a time now where everyone thinks the pandemic is over, and for whatever reason, okay, COVID doesn't exist, except it is. So, you know, <laughs> tread lightly. But I don't see any sort of pandemic hiccups happening unless it's egregious, right? Unless your whole team is down with ext- extreme symptoms or your opponent, the like, whatever, right? I think NC State has all the keys to go ahead and finish the season strong. I'd say I say they drop one just to get their mental right, where they have to get refocused. I really feel like it's going to be, if I would say they're going to drop a game, it's going to be the Clemson one. I hate, I hate that it had to be them. If, but if they drop a head scratcher, I truly believe it's going to be the Florida State game. I think, I think that's going to be the head scratching game where you look back and you're like, damn, why? But crazy things have happened. So those are my predictions. I'm going to give you the Coastal Champion tomorrow. But more than that, I want you guys to have a great rest of your week and you take care. Listen, it's almost Friday. Don't stress about anything you cannot control. Just get the ep- just listen to Locked On ACC podcast or you listen to all of my friends here at the Locked On at the Locked On Podcast Network. We've got Locked On NBA draft happening. We've got Locked On um, conference shows around all of our ACC not only ACC, but Power 5, right? So if you like listening to your respective teams, you like Locked on Wolfpack, Locked on Pitt, Locked on Louisville, Locked on Seminoles, Locked on Blue Devils, maybe some Locked on Boston College, all of those guys. They do really great shows, Locked on Syracuse, Locked on Canes. Man, I could go on for days about how good my conference guys are. So make sure you check them out. Follow on YouTube. Follow and download, subscribe, all of those things, right? Keen is D. Cooper on Twitter if you want to hit me up. Locked on ACC if you want to hit up the show. Looking forward to your feedback on your thoughts about NC State. Do you think that they're going to win the whole thing? You just think they're going to win the Atlantic Division and come up short in the conference? Will they be in the college football playoff? If not, why? I think that's the biggest thing. You can tell me all day, oh, yeah, they're not going to do it, but why? Like, why do you truly think that they don't have what it takes? Okay? So I think you can have that conversation there. And if you don't think they're going to win the Atlantic nor the ACC, who do you think it's going to be? Who do you think is going to be the Coastal when I predict it tomorrow? I'll give you that episode. I would love to hear your thoughts there. I know you guys think I'm going to be a homer and say UNC, but you have not been listening long enough to know <laughs> to know me and to know that I am very honest about that team. But, yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. For Candace Cooper, it's always a pleasure. Until next time.